options for uh, IPL for dry eye, but I started studying uh, low-level light uh, treatment and received uh, several patents. So I learned about you know different LEDs and how that can affect meibomian gland uh, dysfunction. And uh, I'll show you kind of where I started and how I got to the cue. I was supposed to give a cue to somebody. Is the person here? That I'm... Yeah. Oh, is that you? Oh, okay. <laughs> I, have, I have your cue. So the cue is a low-level light treatment that patients do at home to give uh, energy to these glands so that it lengthens the amount of time for their maintenance. So if you're looking at IPL, that's somewhere between uh, 10 to 16 joules that we're giving the patient and in a two-pass protocol which is a protocol that I uh, used with the M22 you know if you're giving 13 joules that's actually you're giving them 26 joules now you can't give uh, the patient an IPL for home use because you know what they would do they probably flash it in their eyes with no closing of the eyes or no shields or anything like that but LED is a great way for patients to give them s the cells some energy and do some photobiomodulation without having any side effects. So uh, the patient will be giving themselves one to three joules on a one pass uh, method to these glands uh, at home. Now there's, and this company is not here, they're a European company, so they've uh, kind of taken what I've done and uh, not done it the right way where they have a patient, patient take a face mask and give themselves some LED and some low level light treatment. But that you need skin contact with IPL and with uh, low level light treatment to actually have these wavelengths of light penetrate down to the dermis. So just, if I were to shoot IPL from this distance away from your skin and your meibomian glands, it would do nothing. And why do I know this? Is because we've tried it. So we tried face masks, we tried IPL. One of the things that I was trying in patients who had Fitzpatrick type six, we were seeing if just shooting the IPL from a distance would actually have any kind of effect on their meibomian glands. Because as you know, you can't do darker skin types because it will uh, actually depigment the skin. But I'll show you how you can do um, type fives. Uh, and um, let's say type fives. I won't say you're gonna have to be really experienced to do a, a type six. But we tried that. The energy just does not penetrate from a distance. It has to be skin contact. So whether it's IPL or low level light treatment, you have to be on there. So the, those are the patents that I have in terms of light treatments for uh, dry eye. So uh, what is IPL? It's a xenon flash lamp, so it's just a gas. If you remember back to your science days, there's the stable gases on the uh, right side of the periodic table, so they have the uh, right amount of electrons on the outer shell. So when we actually give them a little bit of electricity, what happens is you're destabilizing that gas but since it's a stable gas, that xenon gas comes back together. And when it comes back together, it gives you a broad uh, wavelength of light, anywhere from uh, 400 nanometers all the way up to 800 to 900 on the infrared uh, scale. Then what we're doing is we're putting a special filter to block out the wavelengths of light that we don't want. So what we do want and what we found both in low-level light treatment and IPL, red has a special... Uh, place in terms of stimulating and photobiomodulating uh, the meibomian cells. So in the low-level light treatment, we tried uh, blue at the 400 uh, spectrum. We tried red around the 636, and we even tried infrared. And what we were amazed to see is actually on low-level light treatment, uh, red and blue actually stimulated the cells and made the meibomian glands uh, working better. The advantage of blue light is it kills uh, bacteria. So the cues that we've made uh, are in blue light because it gives you the antibiotic bonus of photobiomodulation with uh, bacterial. Um, the other thing that we found with red is patients, even in low level light treatment, can get in trouble. So 
The only time I've seen patients get in trouble with, or doctors get in trouble with IPL is not for not using internal shields. Uh, the only reports uh, out there, and um, I'm an expert witness on one of these cases is, and they actually weren't eye doctors, they were general doctors, flashing IPL near the eye with no closing of the eye, no shield, no nothing. They thought that it was harmless light. And what happened is, no retina problems, but that light was absorbed uh, by the iris and caused iritis and transillumination defects. So you have to have those eyes closed, a shield uh, even better, so it forces the patient to have those eyes closed. And then, as I was saying before, when we're talking about the thinnest skin of the face, you wanna be able to not give all that energy at once you want to pulse that energy. So in the uh, Optolite, you can actually uh, do three pulses separated by milliseconds of thermal relaxation time. So the studies that we did dating back way back in 2007, the six milliseconds with 50 milliseconds of thermal relaxation was the optimum in terms of IPL. You can play around with the amount of joules that you're giving them from 10 to 16 to get the same effects. Once you start getting above 16, you start to do some damage to the meibomian gland. So you, that is your cutoff when you're talking about uh, energy levels at the lid margin. So just kind of remember that. So if you, you know, one of the things that we're talking about is you've got a lot of people that are going off in like weird directions with their IPL. Uh, thinking that these numbers don't matter, but they actually do. When you get into darker skin types, what we found is when you start getting into Fitzpatrick type five, um, some uh, Fitz Fitzpatrick type six, these darker skin types, uh, what you can do is so that they're not getting all of that energy and the, the pigment of the skin isn't absorbing all that energy so you don't do any damage, you can increase the thermal relaxation time. So instead of going 50 milliseconds, between pulses, you can go up to 100 milliseconds of thermal relaxation time and even up to about 150 milliseconds of thermal relaxation time. A question that I just got last week from an IPLer is, hey, I've got a 10 year old that uh, I wanna do IPL, what would be the best way of going about doing a 10 year old? I told him, go 10 joules, you're gonna stick to your six milliseconds because you, you, you can't change that without changing your efficacy and then increase the thermal relaxation time to 150, going, you know, and then wait, let that heat dissipate, another shot, and then let the heat dissipate, and then another shot, so that the kid is, can actually tolerate that. And that's the same thing I do for uh, darker Fitzpatrick uh, skin scale. So if I have somebody who's type five, and I wanna do IPL, uh, I try that. I'll try 100 milliseconds, and I'll remember test spot here. Why is that important to do a test spot here? This is thicker skin than the thin skin around uh, the lids. So do, just do a little test spot there and just see. You can do a test spot, wait 30 seconds, see if there's a reaction to the skin, or you hit them with that energy and they, they immediately buck and go, oh my gosh, this is too much, then it's too much energy then you can go up to the 150 milliseconds of thermal relaxation time. So there's two optolites, right? There's the, I don't know what they're called here, but there's an optolite. Dry eye in advance. Dry eye in So the dry, with the dry eye, you're locked in to uh, energy levels, milliseconds and thermal relaxation time. With the advance, now you have the freedom to actually change uh, these parameters. And, what I would suggest is do the advance, uh, and again, I get no financial reimbursement whether they, they sell it in advance or whatever, because it gives you that flexibility to do different skin types. Um, the other thing it does for you is, so we have an aesthetics and a uh, ophthalmology practice. It allows you to do more things on the aesthetics uh, practice in terms of changing parameters for certain things that you wanna do, which is like facial rejuvenation, acne, um, and pigment.
and then we already went over mechanism of action. Um, so uh, when we first started this with the parameters that we were using for the lower lid, when we tried to do it in the upper lid, uh, we were having uh, problems. There was nowhere for that thermal relaxation and that heat wave to go with the orbit being and the orbital rim being here and the space between the meibomian glands and the orbital rim. Um, uh, even at the lowest energy levels, we were having symptomatic and some uh, actual skin uh, problems uh, doing the upper lid. So the thought was how can we give direct energy to the upper lid without these problems? And the answer to that solution uh, was using a small pencil tip so that there was area around where you were giving energy for thermal relaxation uh, to happen. And then the other thing that we found is you can't give too much energy in that area. So where your parameters are 10 to 16 on the lower lid, your parameters on the upper lid are around 10 to 11 joules. Uh, and then there's somebody, um, uh, one of the doctors was saying he, he's even gone up a little bit more, but I would stick to 10, 10 joules when you're starting uh, the upper lid. Uh, and then you can titrate up uh, as you go. The interesting thing that we found is in the study that we did with the small pencil tip, which was the, uh, the antecedent to the uh, optolite tip that we'll show you, uh, we did a 10 joule to pass. It also had the chiller plate on that small uh, pencil uh, tip. Uh, when we got the Optolite, we started doing uh, two pass, 10 joules, and I wasn't getting the same effect. So to overcome that, and you'll see in the demonstration, I did, uh, we're doing a three pass uh, method for the upper lid with low energy, that 10 to 11 joules. It still has the same six millisecond uh, fluence with a thermal relaxation of uh, 50 uh, milliseconds. And that was from the study that we uh, published in 2017. So has the upper lid has its own little factors that are completely different than the lower lid. And then this is just showing the difference between how a laser works, where it's directed and it's in that spot of where you're directing the laser, but that's not the way IPL works. Where you're putting that footprint, the energy is gonna spread uh, wide, not like laser going directly. So just remember that. And that is the advance of, if you're asking me what's the biggest advance of the Optolite, that is the biggest advance that you do have this smaller tip so that you can actually do some upper lid uh, treatments. So just even looking at our anatomy, if you start looking at the anatomy of the uh, upper lid and lower, you have a lot of room to work here with uh, the lower uh, lid. The orbital bone doesn't protrude uh, in the lower lid, but it does in the upper lid, which is causing a little bit of a trap of energy when you're talking about thermal relaxation. So those are the, those are the things uh, that we have to work around and why there's this upgrade when you're talking about the optolite. So this is the studies that, that we did uh, looking and we did it the same systematic way that we came up with parameters and protocols uh, for IPL in the, in the beginning, uh, trying different energy levels, uh, trying uh, different passes, number of passes. Um, and that's when, once we did that work and we had parameters and protocol, then we actually enrolled patients and we did upper lid. And from that, showing that just upper lid treatment improved the signs and symptoms of meibomian gland dysfunction, then that started the experiments on making what you have today, which is the, which is the Optolite.
So this is my little fun picture of going from M22 to, to Optolite. And it, all, it has all the same uh, advantages uh, when you're talking about the, the larger footprint with the chiller, multiple, um, multiple pulse, uh, even energy distribution. If you put in 10 joules, it's gonna give you 10 joules. It's not um, uh, a decrease of energy as you use it over time. And FDA approved. Um, you have the disposable tip that the, the with the disposable tip the Optolite will not work unless you put the disposable uh, tip on and you shouldn't even if you could you shouldn't uh, the reason why you need that tip there is that the outer circular circumference is not like what I showed you in the experiments that we did where it's just a complete light guide with the Optolite, there's actually a metal cylindrical cone around uh, the sapphire plate. So if you actually did it without the tip, you would be burning the skin with that metal. So uh, that's uh, one of the differences there on, on design. All right, uh, the FDA study. So. Uh, the FDA study was sham treatment, so it was a light that was actually blocked uh, so that there was no wavelengths of light coming to the skin, and then with expression versus IPL uh, with uh, expression. Upper lids weren't done. This was just a lower lid study done with the M22. Uh, we had a wide range of patients because I've got a patient base that's uh, very diverse. There were three centers, uh, Dr. Dell in Texas, uh, our center, and Dr. Desai in uh, Florida. So we had three centers, uh, all with a lot of uh, IPL uh, experience. Uh, and again, same parameters and same protocol. I think there was one or two patients that were done uh, with a little bit higher uh, energy. Um, and then we, as we were the coordinators, we had to talk to them and there was some problems with those higher energies. So these energies, there's a reason for the energy. So uh, stick to the, the protocol and the parameters that have been studied uh, and all the studies have been used. There's method to the, to the madness. Okay, so what we found is you had clinically significant uh, tear breakup time, but what was very interesting is even the sham group uh, that had no real IPL, but had an expression, uh, they showed an improvement in tear breakup time. We showed clinically significant improved tear breakup time with IPL. But it just, again, just another study showing express um, don't, don't listen to people saying no expression, express. Now, there's some hesitancy, I think, with people expressing because it's a new skill, um, uppers and lowers. What will happen is the more you express, the better and quicker you will get at it. So uh, at first, so all of our optum, so we have, we, we're at the Southern College of Optometry. They send us residents and they send us students. And then we have our own optometrists uh, in our practice. Everybody in our practice, optometrists and MDs, do IPL uh, with expressions. And usually, you know, there's some hesitancy. Oh, you know, how do I express? Uh, and again, it's a learned skill, just like cataract surgery, just like LASIK, just like any of these other procedures that you do. And you will get better at it. And I like the technique going from low to above, squeezing, direct pressure. Um, doesn't have to be hard pressure, doesn't have to be a hard squeeze, but it just has to be consistent over a course of time to lower the viscosity of the MIVA and you'll get more uh, out. There's a new expressor from Oculus, uh, which is a silicon tip, and uh, those patients love the, uh, that expressor so I, I'm not sure if you can get it here yet, but like I said, I'll find a way to, 
to get you some of those tips. And I brought some if you guys want to see them. Um, and then, as you guys know, an OSDI score of above 38 is considered severe. These patients were the worst of the worst uh, patients. On, on average, they were all over severe. And what we did is we uh, decreased the ocular surface disease index uh, in these patients with clinical significance on the IPL side versus the sham with expression side. And then this is, goes back to everything that we were discussing before in terms of bringing glands back from the dead. You know, people come in, my glands are dead. They never, my doctor told me they'll never come back. I go, they're dormant. 99% of glands that are, you know, considered dead to the world are just dormant. They need some energy. So in these patients, what we showed, uh, sham uh, versus IPL, is that you get more expressibility and you get glands uh, coming back. I'm only showing you three different parameters. We looked at a lot of different things, so I'm only showing you the ones that were clinically significant. Uh, you know, we did glistening, we did all sorts of other, looked at um, all sorts of other parameters, but these are the ones that were clinically significant and that uh, you'll see in the published study when it comes out. We're actually, uh, taking a different slant on this study in terms of publication. We're actually going through PLOS uh, One. I don't know if you guys have, have seen PLOS. Uh, it's open source, so you don't have to pay to uh, see the, the data, but it's definitely a longer process to get this uh, published. We're on our third um, redo, sending back uh, to them, so it's somebody um, on our team is comparing it to getting something published in the New England Journal of Medicine. So it's actually non-eye doctors looking at your data um, and making comments. So sometimes they're asking very, very simple, uh, basic questions, and then sometimes they, it's also statisticians uh, getting into the, into the weeds. But I think when it finally does get published, uh, we're, we're going to a higher, um, higher level in terms of uh, publication. So I think it's going to be um, a well, well, well done and scrutinized uh, piece of work. So expression is important. There's various studies showing that just even expressing glands are going to make your patients better. So get in there and, and start expressing. And then this is me using that silicon expressor. I just use my uh, finger, like you've seen in the videos before. Take that expressor, go underside of the meibomian gland, and squeeze uh, up. Some people go, well, what about the upper? Is that harder? I have to find the upper lid actually easier. And the way I do, if you have somebody that's a big squeezer and doesn't like to be expressed, what I do is I let them squeeze. What you do is you take the expressor, you put it on the lower lid, and I can show you this when we do demonstration. Let them squeeze with the upper lid over the expressor, and then you can squeeze uh, with the upper lid and the expressor using the lower lid to uh, shield uh, the cornea. It's a great little technique, even for heavy squeezers to do upper lids. So once you start doing this, you'll see that upper lids are just as easy to express as lower lids, if not easier and safer. And then as uh, we've shown before, but this is uh, some of the data that we got from the study is like showing uh, improvement in meibomian gland uh, morphology uh, using uh, mybography. But this is kind of one off from the study. There's not really a um, good way to show this objectively for a study of this magnitude, an FDA study. And one thing I didn't mention in the FDA study is no adverse events. Uh, so uh, no adverse events uh, when we talked about our parameters and, and protocol. So that was another big check off for the FDA that, uh, that there was uh, nothing that was harming. Uh, patients. We talked about photobiomodulation, 
again. Uh, so what I do is I do uh, Optolite. Before I do the first Optolite, I'll go ahead and do my biography. I'll get them through there, and I thought that was a great comment. Uh, once you start getting harder and harder patients, telling them that four treatments is gonna be enough is, is fool's gold. Um, it, it can be you know, several treatments before you get uh, my bony glands coming back. So I actually resist until I see uh, my of them that's better and glands that are working, I won't do another repeat my biography because uh, it'll just be disappointing for the patient and this goes back to the psychology of, of patients. Once I start seeing improvement in their meibomian glands, getting uh, uh, secretions that are better, then I'll go ahead and do the repeat my biography and show them the difference between one uh, and two. But my biography is great to show them that they have a problem. I think uh, when patients come in the first time and we're about to do uh, Optolite, I'll get the my biography and I'll go, look, this, this is your problem. And a lot of patients have never seen a my biography before and they go, oh, wow, oh, I can see. And I show them, this is normal, this is you. And they're like, oh my gosh, you know, this, is the, this is the problem. And I used to videotape every expression, so and patients used to love watching those videos of the a toothpaste like coming out like pasta, like a pasta machine coming out of their, their meibomian glands. Um, so after about 10,000 of these videos and throwing them up on YouTube, the patient wants them, I'll, I'll give them their video. But that's always neat to see their family member watching my you know, expression and seeing all this junk come out and they're like, oh gosh, that's gross. What, what, what are you seeing? You know, oh. So um, that's my other plug for expression. I was asked earlier about uh, hordeolums you know, if a patient has a chalazion that's been sitting there for two years, uh, some of that is scar tissue. You're not going to get that back with uh, IPL. But direct, and this is where the Optolite comes in so that you can give direct energy to uh, that gland. So what I'll do is I'll still do the same two-pass protocol, whatever energy that you were going to normally use for them, whether it's like 13 joules below or 10 joules uh, above. That's the energy that I'll give them. I'll do a two-pass uh, method, and I will still do gentle expression. Uh, again, you want that flow. That flow is going opposite of its normal flow. What you're doing with this expression, even if it's gentle, is you're creating that flow going up and out or uh, down and out. Um, also, it's like the toothpaste, if you leave the cap open and you get that crusting over of that toothpaste on the outer surface, doing that expression will get 